Howdy folks, just here to give you a quick overview of my tech server to show everything that's going on and show what we've made some progress on. Um, so, real quick. Let's clean it. Right, just get back on real quick. So, got my rail system in the rail yard running. I love the jetpacks. So this is my auto sorting rail yard. Got, this is the outgoing supply section. Loads and supplies for the gardens over there, and the other gardens are over there. Loads in the locomotives, the coals, or the coke. Supplies are two loads of the tank cars. And, oops, that's actually supposed to be for a locomotive on that last one. And so we got the trains with tickets all going to different places. So let me show you how I got the system running. So As each train comes out of its unloading yard, they unload back there and they go to the staging. And then the computer will cycle through as this track gets freed up, they'll move to the next one and send that out. And then as there's a track there, it'll block off here. And then this is blocked to keep any more from coming out. So that they automatically cycle through, fill up, and move on. So, as the trains unload, they all unload in there, and they go through an item system. Feeds into that chest, and then gets fed into a mass energy system. This is the water system, which goes 400 buckets of water, and it takes it from the inside water storage, or it also has uh, rain collectors, which take rain and turn it into water in the buckets. So over here we have a Y track with a routing switch. So if it's for the gardens, it switches it to the left, otherwise the trains go to the right and go out that way. And again, there's multi-stage building and tents to keep them from crashing into each other. Now here, oops, that's going to suck. So here, what it does is it takes in all the supplies that the gardens need, and then feeds it out to the individual gardens as they need them. Here is the item loader, where items coming out of the gardens get put into the chest carts. This is the underground portion of that. So I've got the networking pipes feeding the systems and keeping the, everything set as it goes, and then pulling everything else out. And there's an intersection here. So as the mine trains come out, or any of the, uh, the secondary gardens up the other way come out, they go up this way. And when they're coming through this section, it stops any cross traffic. So you can see. And then on their return from the mines, they come in, and any cross traffic here will stop down here until it's clear. And then it feeds the raw system again. Um, I haven't set up the display of train status and where they are. 
that that will be coming soon. So let's go back to the cabin real quick. As you can see, they're, they're stacking up on the loading and unloading system there. So as we come in here, we haven't furnished the house yet. There's a portal right into the underground base. So we got pin systems. Uh, we've got signs running off the computer system network. Uh, we've got a nuclear reactor being steam out to the turbines and return flow of water. They're both being controlled from one of the computers in here. And uh, so it automatically adjusts the speed to try to maintain the magic highest efficiency ratios. There is a rather large capacitor in here. This is uh, 120 million RF storage. Sends power and network out. So we've got the gas processing and storage. So we've got the hydrogen chloride, sodium gas, chlorine gas. Hydrogen gas, actually, real quick. There we so we'll top that up while we're doing this. Oxygen, water vapor, <laughs> sulfur trioxide, and this is sulfuric acid. This is the upstairs service accesses. So over here we got the main water storage system. This is 6,400 buckets of water in there. It feeds into these two salination plants, which when there's sun out in the daytime, will convert that into brine which gets stored here. Brian comes back here. Into these guys, the separators, which converts it into two different chemicals, combines them again. I've got a mob farm in one of the other dimensions that sends back gunpowder, which converts into dust when you get the uh, chemical in there. Turn that into sulfur dioxide. And then sulfur trioxide is oxygen coming in from the water separator. That gets sent down, mixes in with the water vapor from the condenser, and that gets turned into sulfuric acid. Now the reason for all that is we come back into this room. Oops. This takes that, takes and takes ores from the mass effect system, or the mass energy system, converts it into a slurry, cleans up the slurry with water, turns it, crystallizes it, um, grinds it into a dust, purifies it, enhances it, and at the end you end up with five ores for every, uh, or five ingots for every ore you started with. Sneak out of here. So we'll go over here. We've got the mass mass energy storage room. These mass energy drives. Uh, the way this works is through these interfaces, everything goes into little hard drives that turn into data onto these little hard drives. These are the network controllers because I've got a lot of stuff running on here. And 
So as you can see, it takes the ores into here. And then that system pulls them out as it's ready for them and converts them into the ingots. And the nuclear reactor takes gallorium, which goes into the second stage here, um, because it doesn't work through the uh, grinding and slurrying. And then it gets put into back into the Mass Effect system, and the reactor pulls them as it needs it. So let me go grab my jetpack again. So the reactor is being controlled by the computer system, everything's networked in. And I can also access the mass energy system here and pull out things I need if I need to work on stuff here. And it control automatically adjusts the control rods individually through the computer thing, or I can manually scram it from up here. And I get energy coming back from both of them, both of the turbines into here. So like I said, I haven't prettified the base up a whole lot yet. I've only done a few minor things, putting in some corners and making this angle and a skylight down here. So this is the base as it stands. Got a lot of work still to do, but it is getting there. I'm having a lot of fun with the rail system. So. Yep, uh, if anyone wants to get onto this, they can just message me and we will get them set up. Oh, here's the top of the solar evaporators that turns the water into the brine. Um, there's a whole lot more going on. I got some large scale tree farming going on. When it comes in, it goes in, and it goes into a buffer, a chest buffer underneath there, instead of directly into the Mass Effect system. The reason being is I've got it set so I've got two different priorities pulling off of it simultaneously. One has a 30% priority or a level 3 priority and the other has a level 10. The level 10 pulls into the main system, storage system, the level 3 priority pulls out into a furnace and converts it all into charcoal. And uh, that charcoal gets, pulls the wood out. And that charcoal automatically comes back up here, fills up here, and as the trains need it, they automatically grab it. I uh, haven't integrated the Coke furnace automatically yet, but I do have it manually running. Um, I do love the digital miners so much more than the Billcraft Quarry. The Billcraft Quarry builds or digs huge, ugly gashes in the landscape. Whereas this guy is a lot harder to build because it requires a lot more um, resources and energy. Um, and to build, to dig away from your base, you either need to run power lines the whole way or get your test racks running. Um, I am a bit of a, a, I don't know what to call it, idiot. I kind of like having these mechanical systems where these trains are coming, grabbing what there is to grab, and, and you know, running it back on their own. Instead of, the test rack is capable of are capable of transferring items, liquids, and energy. Um, I'm just using them purely for energy, but that is personally just a pure personal quirk. Um, I love the digital miners though. So, what the way they work is, if you notice, this is going here. Let me put on the display. So, within the, the wall that this is doing, from all the way up to all the way down, it is looking for whatever I tell it to look for, which is one of the neat things. So if I reset this configure, I'm going to set my radius max, 95. So right now, it's got a dictionary filter of anything that's got ore, that qualifies as ore. But I can also grab, well, there's not going to be any of that down there. 
and I can put things in and it will also grab those. So there isn't going to be any cobblestone down there just because, well, it is what it is. Um, I haven't upgraded them yet. We can add upgrades to these machines. Um, it'll take a fair amount of resources. Oh, I got a visitor. Hold on one second. Say, say hi to everyone out there on the internet, buddy. Can you say hi? <laughs> All right, guys. So that is going to be it for today. Um, if you got any specific topics you want me to cover next time, let me know. Um, I will be posting this on YouTube as well as Twitch. All right. Everyone have a good day. Say bye. <laughs> bye.